and not a fact. In 2008, the Brevard County Schools, after a board vote, said Brevard students will continue to be taught the theory of evolution the same way as they're taught the cell theory, the theory of relativity, and the at atomic theory, namely as a proven fact. So, Darwinian evolution, oh, one more here, 2005, Kansas State Board of Education voted to allow people to even question Darwinian evolution as a flawed theory. And the Kansas City Democrat board member Janet Wolf said, this is a sad day, we're becoming a laughing stock, not only to the nation, but to the world, and I hate that. Ain't that the truth? You want to teach that Darwin's evolution is not absolute proven fact, the world is going to laugh you off of the faculty and blackball you and won't allow you to teach, or laugh you out of the classroom, put you to shame. And I believe our children today are not being taught to think critically, to ask questions, but to simply be spoon-fed this and to regurgitate it back and to accept it, because otherwise they'll be ridiculed. But what happens if you just simply question it? If you simply say, you're a scientist, okay, scientists have data, present the evidence, give me fossil evidence, for example, that Darwin's evolution uh, took place. You know, if you look at the Nebraska man, which was heralded as the missing link, man and ape, 1922, they found out now it's a pig's tooth. It's verified. It wasn't man or ape. Piltdown man, 1912, was touted as proof of man evolved from apes. That's determined to be a forgery. A Java man, 1892. I got a skull. I got a thigh bone. It's the connection. It's an orangutan skull and a human thigh bone. He forgot to tell you that he found them 50 feet apart. Neanderthal man, if you, he had arthritis, if you simply uh, redraw the man now without bias and putting extra hair on him, he looks just like us. Lucy, the four million old ancestor in Africa, discovered in 19, 1973, an extinct ape. And no one yet in 152 years since Darwin have they found one fossil, one shred of evidence pointing to a missing link that is, they can verify that this is a missing link between two species. You know why? There ain't none. There is none out there to use better English. Even if they find something that looks like a missing link, you know that at least they, est they estimate 5,000 animals are going extinct a year. If they find something that looks halfway between a bird and, and a snake or something like that, I don't know. How do you know? That's not just an extinct species that we don't know about today. But it's spoon fed to our children. And I want to just take this example here. I got a Casio watch. You take any university professor, he finds this in the woods, and I hold this up to him and I say, did nature make this? Was this by chance, cha-ching? Or was this by an intelligent creature? He said, well, obviously it's by an intelligent creature because it's so specially designed. Well then, what is more complicated? My Casio watch here or the world? What about you? You and your body have 100 trillion cells. Your eye, according to Wikipedia, can distinguish 16 million colors. I didn't know there were 16 million colors. The average brain has 100 billion nerve cells. Your nerve impulses run from your brain to your body at 170 miles per hour. And for me to even talk up here, takes 72 different muscles to produce human speech. Yes, all by chance, ka -ching. Thank you, Dr. Bob. <laughs> so what's God tell us then? He says, train up your children in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Yes, he tells us in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. And even if after all the work that's done out there by the media, by the world, by the pseudo-college professors, still, even now, 42% of Americans don't buy it. They believe God created the world just as it is, and 70% of white evangelical Protestants. Okay. Let's shift gears just a little bit. Next thing God says to us is this. I want you to beware of something. Beware of trying to make my word sound like Darwin. Beware of trying to make my word compromise with Darwin, because guess what? It won't work. Here's an article that came out in uh, June of this year, 2011. 
You can see the picture of the guy there. Nice artist rendition here. The search for the historical Adam from Christianity Today. It's supposed to be a Christian magazine, but the key player in this article is Francis Collins, who is famous for his work in mapping out the human, human genome, the genetic code. He claims to be an evangelical Christian, and he promotes to you and to me theistic evolution. What's that mean? That he believes in God in the Bible, but he also believes in Darwin and that it happened just as he said, except not by chance, but God directed evolution. God directed natural selection. God directed mutations and the strong killing the weak and eliminating them and bringing forth everything this way. What's he say about humans?